Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Happy Monday, all you minties. Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Daredevil by Mark Wade Omnibus Volume 1. This is the latest printing, the 2023 printing, from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. Before getting started, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This reprint is due out in the direct market and book market on November 7th or 8th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. And this is the cover by the legendary Neil Adams. I believe this is the variant to issue number one, if I'm not mistaken. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover. And that's the one that's going to be available everywhere. And that one is supplied by Paulo Rivera. While the direct market cover by Neil Adams is only available at places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, WaltzComicShop.com, Reads Comics, Comics Bugle, Dying Breed Collectors, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, Organic Price Books, and places like that. And there is a difference in the spine. And what's also interesting is that both of these are different than the first printing cover, which I have here on the left hand side and of course that's the one by mike alred who did just one issue in here uh but let's look at the cover here the marvel logo wade rivera martin samney and rodriguez which are the same names that we had in the original printing now looking at the spines together here it looks like they have changed the logo of daredevil to match up with the current printings of new books new daredevil omnis and the new Daredevil Omnis that they've been coming out with. So it's not the first time that they've changed the font from this to this. But you still have Rivera, Martin, Samney, and Rodriguez, Volume 1. And then that piece right there, which is, of course, the standard edition cover by Rivera. And then the back of the book, looking identical, honestly. I uh, rated Teen Plus and a Daredevil series like no other. And that's, that's true. Uh, ISBN. And the ISBN looking a little bit smaller there. And the price on both of these is $100. So the new printing is $100. Just like the original printing. Now let's look at it underneath. Oh good. The dust jacket. Here let's look at the flaps right here. Mark Wade joins the Pantheon of Daredevil Legends. And then a bio on the creators. And this tells you a little bit about the character. And what they've done here is taking this image, which looks like this, and I feel like they've zoomed in on the image and flipped it. Now you may be wondering what all these lines are, and I'll explain that when we look at the artwork in here. Uh, but yes, this does look a little weirder than this. This, you can kind of get the idea of what's happening maybe. Over here, it's just zooming in. You don't really see much of his billy club, the... The whip that goes out. Mm, but I'm wondering why they decided to flip it, though. Or if the image is supposed to... I don't think... I think the image is supposed to look like this. All right. Now, we're going to open this book up. Look at the artwork. Talk about the type of stories collected in here. And uh, look at the extras and the build of the book. And then compare the internal artwork to the original printing. If you don't want to know anything about this run and you just love Daredevil and you've been reading them in chronological order, I strongly suggest jumping right to the extras and the build of the book and the comparison to the original printing. I'll put timestamps in the description of the video. I just don't want to spoil anything. If you're one of those people that are going into this because you, I don't even want to say you're going into this blind. That's just a ridiculous joke. Uh, but if you're going into this because you love Daredevil and you don't need to know anything about it, by all means, just jump to the part where I do a comparison to the build and everything. But at the very least, I think you should have read Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, Andy Diggle. At the very least. Just because there's a lot of things that they set up that Mark Wade talks about in here. 
and I don't want this book to spoil any of that. As a matter of fact, really quick, if you're wondering how it's all supposed to be read, this is where I have the book, or rather where it really belongs right after the Shadowland Omnibus, which is also being reprinted. All right, so we are going to be talking about minor spoilers of the previous runs, not going into details as to the hows and when and what exactly, but the status quo here does rely on the things that have happened in the past. Okay, just making sure that everybody knows. Let's go ahead and crack it open. And here we go with these crimson red end sheets there and this image of daredevil here comes daredevil and written by mark wade now he's not the only writer greg rucka actually writes just a little little part of this but it's still a really cool part and pretty much all the credits here like you have paulo rivera marcos martin emma rios kano koi pam and marco Kiketo doing the art and then of course the big name here that i think a lot of people probably think of when they think of this run and that is chris samney uh, doing a lot, a big chunk of this book. And of course, written by Mark Wade. And we start off with this little piece. And this is the third time they've relaunched the title of Daredevil. So you had Daredevil, the original series from the 60s. And then that got renumbered with the Marvel Knights when Kevin Smith and Joe Quesada did that particular relaunch. And then this is the third time they relaunched it with a brand new number one. And it's funny because after this, they're relaunching it again, even though Mark Wade and Chris Samney are still working on the book. Uh, but, you know, you have the Secret Wars and Marvel was just taking the time to renumber it to an issue number one. Uh, you have issue number one right here, so you have the cover in frame. And this, just a little bit about Daredevil, talking about his father, how he never wanted Matt to follow in his footsteps. He wanted him to go to law school. And this page right here pretty much catches you up to speed in case you've never read a Daredevil comic. So speaking of Daredevil comics, what's collected in here before we talk about the book itself... Collected in here are Daredevil 1 through 27 and the 10.1 issue, Amazing Spider-Man 677, Avenging Spider-Man number 6, and Punisher number 10. And the book has 720 pages. And if you're thinking, man, that's so small because we're used to these big, fat books. Thicker than a snicker, baby. I get it. That's the way I like them. But not everybody is like that. I have a lot of my viewers that are like, oh, these books are too big. If they had split Immortal Hulk into two Omnis, I would have bought them. So keep that in mind. Just because we like them thick doesn't mean that everybody else likes them thick. I know. It's crazy. Difference of opinion. But hey, whatever. Uh, although, I'm curious what people do like. How big an, uh, of an omnibus do they like? All right, so what is this? What's happening in this book? And why is it so divisive? Why do some people not care about this run? I think I know the answer to that, or at least a big part of that. So Mark Wade, this is the same gentleman that wrote Kingdom Come and wrote JLA and wrote The Flash, came back to Marvel because he had written for Marvel before. Of course, he had that phenomenal run on Captain America and the Fantastic Four and before that X-Men. Nobody really talks about his X-Men. I don't think he talks about his X-Men. When I interviewed him, we didn't really talk about his X-Men. And there's a reason for that. But he came back to Daredevil. And he, when he got Daredevil, he decided to change things up. Because there's always been this understanding of Daredevil that since the days of Frank Miller, Daredevil's supposed to be a tortured soul. He's not supposed to be happy. He's supposed to have temporarily happiness for a while. And then that's just pulled under his feet. And the poor man just falls flat on his face, questioning his belief in God, questioning his friends, questioning humanity. And it seems to be a thing. It, it's a common thing with Daredevil, no matter who has written Daredevil since the days of Frank Miller. And whenever somebody comes along that writes Daredevil a little bit different, people are up in a, you know, they, they throw their arms up. How dare Anna Senti write Daredevil with a little bit of happiness, which makes her run stand out. So back to this. What you're looking at here is a Daredevil comic, which is crazy, I'm sure, because I've done a lot of overviews on my channel of Daredevil comics, and there's usually darker tones, or there's nighttime, and he's in Hell's Kitchen. Why is it so bright? What's going on? What's with the colors and the simplistic art style, yet perfect art style? Well, this is when things change for Matt Murdock internally. You see, what happened before this was the whole storyline with Shadowland. <laughs> And without going too deep into spoilers, in Shadowland, Matt Murdock went up 
the deep end. Now, of course, that's explained later on because he was possessed by a demon. You can read about it uh, for yourself and judge that story for itself. Um, his identity has been revealed to the world during this particular time. And he's having to cope with that. And it's really interesting what Mark Wade decides to do. With his identity out there in newspapers, he takes this opportunity to F, like, let it affect not Daredevil, but Matt Murdock's life. That him and Foggy Nelson, and Nelson and Murdock are still together as partners in this law firm. They can't legally give anybody any kind of representation. So what they do, what they work out is a deal with people that they can consult them. So they become consultants for people. And it all has to do with Matt Murdock, of course, people believing that he's Daredevil. And I love the way that he handles this. So it all starts off with issue number one here. And we'll talk more a little bit about uh, the story and the themes here that I enjoy so much about this book. Um, we start off with this story about a kidnapping going wrong and it is the spot of all people a spider-man villain that shows up in a very dark way even though the book has brighter colors and is a throwback to that bronze and silver age art style there's a lot of dark elements in here that people i don't think got there they were already judging the book on the first six issues and they didn't get to the dark stuff which brings it back to the classy or the frank miller classic daredevil stuff uh, so matt fights off the spot and this will come to play later on. And eventually, you know, this is where you learn that, oh, he's been outed. And I love the way that he deals with this, right? Like, people are like, hey, Daredevil. And he's like, where? Of course, Matt Murdock being blind. And people are like, oh, you know, man, quit messing around with me. And he's like, no, really, where is he? And that's the way he's facing life. And he has a big smile on his face whenever he's talking to people. We meet a new character. This is the assistant district attorney. Kirsten McDuffie, who will play a big and important part in Matt's life. You know, Matt's always been a fan of the ladies and always has had a lady to his side. Uh, whether it's Karen Page, Typhoid Mary, or Elektra, or Black Widow, whomever it is at the time, Black Cat. Um, he's always had a lady to his side, and it feels like that's what Mark Wade was building here. But it's a slow, slow process. It's not like she's googly eye from Matt Murdock. And as a matter of fact, she kind of teases him about being Daredevil and he just takes it to heart. He's like, yeah. And he just takes it as a joke. He's like, yeah, I'm Daredevil. Sure, whatever. And I love that. I love the way that he faces this because he's almost like he's being a smart ass. Uh, so he's joking around with Foggy Nelson. He's taking a lighter approach at life instead of brooding over things, even though horrible things will start happening here. That even Foggy Nelson starts noticing like, what's going on, Matt? Old Matt Murdock would have beat the living crap out of this guy that just did this to you. Why aren't you? And Matt's like, I'm just, well, this is the new me. What can I say? Uh, there's a misunderstanding with Captain America here. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the fact that his identity is out. So we have villains from his past like Ulysses Claw here that show up. And of course, he's one of the most interesting villains. Uh, he's been used in the past stories. But I love the way that when he comes back, he's being used a little bit different. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that he can manipulate sound. And while we have a lot of the early artwork being Paolo Rivera, uh, eventually Chris Samney does take over the book. I mentioned earlier I wanted to talk about the radar and the way that it looks in this particular run and i think it's so unique uh that you know we've seen his sonar we've seen his the, the way that daredevil matt murdoch sees the world but i think it's so unique in this particular run i love the lines i, I love that this is how matt portrays the world and the beauty of it is with now going into spoilers later on it kind of becomes its own type of character and the way that the artist whether it's chris samney or anybody that steps in and draws it it just manipulates it in a way that sometimes the villains are twisting the way things are supposed to look and i think it's just a unique interpretation of his powers and the way like i said matt sees the world now there's a big story where daredevil ends up with this mcguffin right here that he's keeping from the criminal mastermind so everybody from aim to hydra every secret evil organization in the marvel universe wants this thing back that can 
out, everybody. This right here is an amazing story about Matt Murdock, not Daredevil, saving a bus full of children during this horrific snowstorm that, and the bus just crashed and he's the only adult there and he has to lead them to safety yet they're the ones that kind of end up saving him and it's a beautiful story uh well with this mcguffin that i was talking about this piece that he took from these villains he's keeping it safe so the black cat is of course hired to go and steal it back from matt uh matt murdoch and this leads into the crossover with amazing spider-man 677 this story right here is dark. This is where the Mole Man decides to steal something really precious from Matt Murdock. And I can't reveal what it is because it's it's dark. And there's a twist to that story. And there's an even bigger twist to what Foggy Nelson finds out. Leading him to believe that maybe Matt Murdock isn't Matt Murdock. Maybe he's going off the deep end. Maybe he's crazy. Maybe he's not handling all of this well and he's finally snapped so maybe he shouldn't be giving any kind of legal advice maybe nelson and murdoch need to end and also foggy's dealing with his own drama which i'll talk a little bit about here in a second uh there's the wonderful crossover with the punisher and the avenging spider-man and this is really interesting because this is when i fell in love with marco Caquetto's artwork there is a lady punisher but don't call her that but I remember at the time that this was coming out, I loved his art because it does have that anime flair, but people were hating on it. And why? Because Punisher looks like a pretty boy and people did not like the way that Kiketo drew the Punisher, even though he was the main artist on the run with Greg Rucka uh, writing the story. I thought it was good. I really dug his artwork and I'm glad that he got to draw, uh, draw all three issues of this crossover. Uh, this is the one that's co-written by Greg Rucka, so he did co-write these three issues. Um, I really liked his art, and I'm so glad that I wasn't the only one, because eventually he went over and took over Daredevil. He drew a lot of Daredevil during Chip Zdarsky's run and did the whole Devil's Reign storyline. So I'm glad I wasn't the only one that noted that he is a phenomenal artist and he finally got his due. Uh, but yeah, I remember during this time, people were hating on the <laughs> his art. Uh, this is an adorable date right here between Matt Murdock and finally Kirsten. And then Foggy reveals something huge to Matt. Something big that affects his health and his life. And Matt is just... The way he handles it is also a little bit strange. So what you're dealing with here is that instead of just cowarding down or hanging around rooftops of churches and putting his body up against a cross or crying or just sleeping around with women left and right so he can forget about his pain what we're seeing here is how daredevil is dealing with depression and he's basically just running away from it and denying it which leads to a lot of people not enjoying this run and i get it because a lot of the things that matt says are not matt murdoch a lot of the way that daredevil handles the villain especially when they're going hard at him like what mole man did deserves a beating but instead daredevil just kind of smiles and walks away and a lot of people didn't like that and even you know the tone of the book the story this is the mike alred story with stilt man because who else are you going to use when mike alred's drawing an issue uh here's some more of the chris samney stuff and i need to talk about this villain too the coyote uh, there's two villains that he introduces, and I promise that's all I will say, because I can't go too... I really want to do a deep dive on this book, because I f***ing love it. And it deserves to be on everybody's freaking shelf. But I promise, for the people that read it and didn't like it, because it's not like Daredevil, by the end of this omnibus, it will start feeling like Daredevil. There's a lot of questions that are answered towards the end. And there is a reason why Mad is acting this way. And I swear to you, if you really like this book, if you buy it just because you're a fan of Mark Wade, you're going to love the second volume even more. Because to me, the second volume is even more powerful than this one. And I know that's high praise, and I really don't try to do that in my Omnis, but I don't want people to be shying away from this book because of what they've heard others say that oh it's too happy it's that's not the way daredevil is but there's all reason for all of that i promise all right coyote why was i censoring those pages well because something big happens to matt and i don't want to spoil that uh but coyote is one of the most interesting and 
creepiest villains that Matt has ever had to face, uh, even in his design. There's another villain that is introduced through these pages towards the end of this particular omnibus, and that is Ikari. And Ikari means fury in Japanese. And he... I, I don't know if y'all have seen Suicide Squad, the, the Suicide Squad by James Gunn, but there's that line where he does everything I do, but better. That's the way that Mark Wade writes this particular character. He looks like Daredevil, uh, even his dad's colors, battling Jack Burdock's colors. And at times, Ikari can beat the living crap out of Daredevil. So Matt is at a loss. He's like, oh, this guy is just as good as I am, except better at times. And his whole backstory, man, it's really interesting how he came to be and what his secrets are. Especially, there's a big revelation that happens with that character that just pisses Matt Murdock off. All right, I think I've talked about the pitch enough and I've shown off the artworks. Got Marcos Martin, by the way, doing some of the issues here. Absolutely beautiful artwork. Like I said, it is a throwback to that silver and bronze age with a little bit of that modern spin to this art. It's beautiful and it fits the tone of the story that Mark Wade is telling here. And let's look at the back matter and we'll welcome everybody back. All right, so here's a spotlight on Daredevil, focusing on Mark Wade and Paulo Rivera, the run, and how they're dealing with the new status quo. Because after every writer leaves Daredevil, there's always a new status quo, and the current writer has to deal with said status quo. The covers are here in the back, the variant covers, but not all of them. Sometimes the variant covers are in between chapters, like this is the backup story right here of Daredevil number one. And sometimes they're on the opposite side of the standard edition cover. So there's the Neil Adams cover to issue number one, the variant, and then the standard edition cover. But these are all in splash pages. And there's the spread of the connecting covers of Avenging Spider-Man 6, Punisher 10, and Daredevil 11. Beautiful cover here by Adam Kubert and Danny Mickey and Justin Ponser. And this is the cover process right here, where Paulo Rivera wanted Matt Murdock to be. And the process of the art right here, from the thumbnail sketch, to the pencils, to the inks, to the colors. I love when this stuff is added. Makes you really appreciate the art of storytelling. And without the words, you can just follow the art and know exactly what's going on. That's when you know you have a really good artist. And Mark Wade knew that. He is really... Hammering in the fact that this is a different and lighter Daredevil. And here are some layout pages. Character designs. And this is for the special extra issue. I thought we take a couple pages to show some more of the behind the scenes work that Mark and Chris do to make Daredevil such a compelling read each month. Hope you like it. So these are a little behind the scenes of Chris Samney's artwork. And then the end sheets. Alright, let's look at the binding and talk about the build and then we'll do a art comparison 720 pages this particular book is printed at the mega printer um, so the paper stock is this thick glossy paper is very very minimal gutter loss uh, there is minimal bleed through because there are lighter tones and lighter colors used through this particular omnibus you can see lots of whites and lots of light colors even the fights that take place at nighttime have vibrant colors um, so there is minor, minor bleed through. You got to be looking for it. And we saw what the eye looks like in this one. And this is what the eye of the original printing from 2017 looks like. And this is the one that was printed at the Donley printer. Let's do a little comparison between both of these volumes. All right. We have the original printing here on the left hand side and the new printing here on the right hand side. And immediately the end sheets are different. This is a little more daredevilish than the whites right here. And the colors looking a little bit darker over here on the right hand side. Uh, yeah, it almost feels like the original printing. It feels like it's a little faded out, the reds right here. Red actually looking more like the red here. This is a little more vibrant on the right hand side. But that's just right there. That's, of course, the credits. So let's look over here. 
No, even the frame is a little more vibrant, and Daredevil himself is a little more vibrant. And the colors... Yeah. So it seems like the colors are a little bit... At least this is just my opinion, of course. A little bit better in the new printing. Now, because we're looking, as I said, as these lighter tones, colors used in the book instead of darks that we're used to in Daredevil, um, we are looking at minimal bleed through you know honestly the paper stock i want to say feels about the same if not just a little bit thicker than the original i'm not a paper expert nor do i ever claim to be uh, but it just feels just a little bit thicker but it looks about the same type of bleed through coming from the opposite page so not a lot but it is there now as far as the way the book lays over with let's look at a spread i actually like the way this one lays over more it seems like there's less gutter loss and again this being the mega printer than here uh, and it's not like this has a lot but it seems like there's just a little bit less on the new printing than this one here but that's it that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, if you missed the, out on it the first time around, which cover you're going to get, what you thought about this run. And I always love this particular thing about people uh, because everybody's different. So I never do get to ask, what is the perfect size omnibus for you? I know some people love them thicker than a snicker like I do, but others don't mind 20, 25 issues in a comic book. They think, or in an omnibus, they think that's the perfect size. But I always love to know what everybody's perfect size of omnibus is. Maybe I'll do a poll on YouTube, or maybe I'll just ask. That's what I'll do. Forget all of this. No, no, no. Answer in the comments down below. I do wonder what the perfect size omnibus is for you all. What page count? All right. That's it, everyone. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Smash that like button on the way out. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Check out our Patreon and Spreadshop. And the links are in the description of the video. Much love.